Okay, well, welcome back, everybody. Um, today, we're talking to one of the students we worked with a couple of years ago, and he's been in school and doing excellent. Uh, somebody we we worked for a little while to get him into school. Fortunately, his school took a not a chance, but you know, recognized what we've seen over the years. What a great candidate he would be, and he's excelling in school, which we always knew he would. So, I'll let uh, him go ahead and take over. And if you just tell us your name and where you go to PA school. Uh, hi, I am Brian Wilson, and I attend a Wagner College PA program. Well, Brian, you know, you and I have been working together for a few years, and I mean, it's been a journey, but again, I always knew once you got in, you just kill it, and you have been. So very proud of you and very happy that this has all worked out. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So why don't you tell me, um, where did this whole idea come from to become a PA and just know that you're already in school, so you can tell me the real answer here. For sure. Um, so when I got into a car accident, which I, you know, explained in my um, my personal statement, when we were working on it together, I was greeted by a team of doctors and a team of physicians, and I had no idea what a PA was at that time. I was probably about 18, and I know I wanted to go into healthcare, but I was looking, you know, more towards med school. Mm -hmm. But as I was in the, you know, in the emergency department, I was helped mainly by a PA. And first and foremost, I had no idea who, like, what it was. Like when they introduced himself to me, I was, you know, like, what are you, what are you, are you a nurse? Like what's going on here? And then, you know, after seeing what he did for me and like, you know, the overall process of how I handle it, I started to dive deeper into the profession. And this is around the time where PAs became more uh, prevalent in the hospitals. So I started to say more and more of them. And that just, I think that just piqued my interest in the beginning. Okay, great. So uh, once you decided to make that move, had you already finished college or were you still in college at the time? Uh, so I was going into my sophomore year of uh, college and I was a bio pre-med major. So I was on the track of like, you know, med school where I had that prerequisite already. So I wasn't really concerned about that, but it was just more so uh, figuring out my place in the field, you know? Okay. And in school, you get a, a taste of it, but you don't really get it until you get the, the full experience of it outside of school and you start working uh -huh. in the field, you know? Okay. So when you were in college, were you able to do all of your prerequisites in your undergraduate or did you have to get some of them done after you graduated? Uh, so I completed a few prerequisites um, in college. Uh, so it's like, you know, all, the, all, all my chemistry, my orgos, my all, all my maths and everything like that. But um, after I graduated, um, I took the initiative to take more classes afterwards. So I ended up taking like immunology, uh, biochemistry, um, fundamental psychology, just like stuff like that, just like just to make my, uh, my application more dense and more, you know, you know, make me a better candidate for time I was like trying to apply, you know? Okay. Now, um, what were you doing? Or I guess, like, what was your first experience into healthcare? Like, what, what, position did you take as your first role okay so it's actually crazy because i graduated may 13th um 2018 and i had my first job interview july 19th 2018 so i had a small gap in between mm -hmm. school and working right into the field you know mm -hmm. and my first job was uh, with scrub america i was described at uh, mount sinai west in midtown in uh cardiology Mm -hmm. And all throughout college, I was a heavy advocate for orthopedics, like sports medicine. I've had, you know, internships, like solely focused on orthopedics. And when I got, um, when I applied to the job, I was like, you know, I just want to work in the job in the field so I can get my feet wet, feel more comfortable. And from there, I was terrified at first, like terrified. Cardio is such a big field, a big specialty that people rely on a lot. Mm -hmm. but, um, once I started, I did not look back. Like it, I felt like it was such a, a a great field, a great sense for me to start in, because everybody relies on them. So each team had to console cardio before even making a a decision on the on the patient. So that you know gave me a an idea of how you know the hospital is structured when it comes to you know patient care and all team being involved with uh, the patient's decision and patient's actual um, plan. Now, so when you graduated in 2018, how long did you wait before you first applied to a PA program? Uh, so I applied that next cycle in April. So okay. 
I worked from July to the the whole next April, and I uh, I applied, but I applied on my, on my own. Like it was solely on my own. Had no like idea what to expect. Like hearing Castle for the first time, I was like, "What is this?" Mm-hmm. And I was uh, it was definitely uh, nerve wracking, mm-hmm. you know, because of like I said, prerequisites, you know, you know, having different doing different things, different testing. So, so it was uh, overwhelming. Plus trying to handle working as well on top of that. <laughs> and I had no guidance like at all. So um, it was really just, you know, to see what happens, honestly, like, let me just apply yeah. what was going on and see what happens. Okay. So the first cycle, did you get any interviews? Uh, no interviews the first cycle. Okay. So then you reached out and then or your mother actually reached out. Oh, and then yeah. so we started to work together um so the second cycle we worked together and did things like picking out some schools recommend some additional coursework but second cycle any interviews uh second cycle no interviews i had a um a few invites to um campus uh, campus visits and like you know actual information centers where i went to um lmu in knoxville Uh um and that was a great experience you know i got able to see like their labs and everything so it gave me some some hope where it's like you know I'm not quite there yet, but I know I can make it. So it really just pushed me toward the finish line, you know. But that whole uh, that whole second um, year I was applying, I decided to do more in my you know my my job. So I mm-hmm. ended up quitting my scribe job, and I ended up going to school to become a phlebotomist and mm-hmm. e-technician as well as an MA. And then I began working for uh, Summit Health in uh, mm-hmm. Long Island at a family practice, which I enjoyed very much. It made me uh, real comfortable actually dealing with patients, talking to them, um, just dealing with the day-to-day, and actually, you know, being empathetic toward them. You know, just mm-hmm. getting the aspect of, like, talking to patients on the bedside. Sure. And I think that job actually made me really want to be a PA. Because, yeah. like, you know, even, the even like, you know, the patients were asked, like, they were asking me, like, oh, are, are you the PA? Are you the doctor? What's going on? Because I was so heavily active on their chart. I was asking questions. I was just, like, making sure that I covered all bases prior to the doctor, you know, going in there. Because as an MMA, your job is to make the doctor's job easier, you know? So that was my main focus. So I made sure I covered all bases prior to the do- uh, patient even seeing the doctor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I think that really propelled me in the right direction and gave me, like I said, that and the extra courses gave me, you know, extra hope for me to like to be like, oh, I can do this, you know. Now you did have a challenge throughout all this process, which was which, what? Uh, my GPA. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. well, I know. I mean, you and I know <laughs> that it really doesn't represent who you are as a candidate, but certainly schools that is something they're going to take a look at, and it does affect their ability, but. You know, we just decided, you know, we're going to go ahead and do this again. Um, I know there was a point, at least I, I remember it, where I think there was a period where you just like, just no more classes. I can't do it or I just need a break. And so we, we both took a little bit of a break there and then, okay, got back into it. And then here we go for the third cycle. Yeah, it was um, a bit overwhelming, you know, trying to juggle. <laughs> um, I was taking three classes at a time. And right, this, you know, like you know, kind of rough classes, so it was hard to juggle <laughs> that. Plus, uh, school, yep. and not excuse me, uh, school plus work, and um, well, plus when, shadowing and volunteering and everything well, else. But it was just hard to just manage, you know. Yes, but uh, overall, I think that time period, like looking back now, that time period prepared me for school. Yep, you know, because. I will tell people right now, didactic year is is a is, is rough. <laughs> it, 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 will, it they weed out the week for sure. <laughs> and if, if you aren't mentally, you know, mentally strong for this, you will end up having your your, your breakdown, you know. But you learn to keep pushing through. It, that's that's what it will come down to, man. <laughs> no, I I love what you're saying right now. I'm working in, you know, I continue to work with other students and some of the ones I have some right now that are like, hey, you're putting too much on me. You're asking too much of me. And like, oh, oh my God, God. You, you don't even know what you're going to get into when yeah. you get into school. No idea. Yeah. Like, what what you put me through during the you know the process and everything, I I am so thankful for honestly because that's nothing compared to what the that tech is. Nothing. And, 
what you just said is literally what we say to students all the time. As bad as whatever it is that you're doing right now, as much as overwhelming as tasking this is, it's going to be worse in school. So you, you told me that as well too. I remember you told me that, and I was yeah. like, I don't know, but you were <laughs> you were you were correct. But it, it it prepared me for sure. So, um, I know you did meet with you know the school. You met with Wagner, yep. and then you did get an interview. So this was your first interview. So we started working on interview prep and I think we did this fairly aggressively. So it was, uh, it was uh, very aggressive actually. <laughs> but it's crazy because that aggressiveness that we, that, that took time to like, you know, day to day, the, 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 the tweaking of the, of the answers, the actual confidence that you, that you have to pursue or like, you know, actually, you know, have them see. Yep. It, it it goes hand in hand with the interview. Like I walked in the interview feeling confident that I know whatever question that they're going to throw at me, I had the I had a, a great answer for it, you know? And it wasn't just a, a fake answer. It was actual genuine answer. Like we actually like went through each question, like the question right. that we went through, they were, if not the exact question that they asked, very, very similar where you can just, you know, tweak one of the answers or add another answer to that. You know, and um, it's crazy because during my interview, um, they even asked me if I would I ever got interviewed by any other school because I was such a good interviewer. They were you saying are. interview, and I was like, "Yeah." There's like no way, like you know, it feels like you've been interviewed before, and it was because of the work that we put, like that we did, that we put in. Mm -hmm. But that's something I always said to you. I knew, you know, from probably the first few months we started working together, all we had to do was get you in front of somebody because you have the right personality the right demeanor very positive person you do have a lot of confidence and this is what they want to see but we just knew once you got to a school got to an interview that's all it would take you, you said it firsthand and i was like you know what and you've been there since day one so i know like whatever you were saying to me <laughs> it was it was it was no no questions asked it was like james i got you i'll get it done well like, it was straight to that I think we're even starting. I think we're starting to prepare for the next cycle. And then obviously you got the great news. And so. Oh, that's what exactly what happened, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got the news um, April 11th. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got accepted. <laughs> and I, was now, I mean, I, I love hearing about your progress and your grades in PA school. Are they reflective of your grades in your undergraduate? Oh, not at all. I last exactly. semester I had a three five. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, this semester I'm doing even better. So. <laughs> oh, I know <laughs> you're you're killing it. Even better semester. So I, I'm I'm enjoying my time here, and like I have a, a strict study plan now. So yeah. like when I first went into a PA school, it was an adjustment, of course. You know, being out of school for five years. Yep. But um, you know, I I realized that a lot of uh, learning that I did in the past was memorization, instead of more so critical thinking. And actually, you know, thinking through things, and that's what medicine is about. Like you, you can't memorize everything because not every scenario, right. is, you know. So you have to have the actual thought, a thought process behind things that lead to different thought processes, and like you know, it just, you know, just adds up onto each other. And uh, once I realized that, studying has been different, test grades have been different, my stress levels have been down. So like I have, a, <laughs> like, yeah, like once I have the. Once I had my um my strict study habits, uh -huh. I just went from there and I ran with it because I saw the uh the actual test grades that were improving, you know, life was getting better and everything. It, it was getting harder, of course, yeah. but as you went on, you learn the same things, but you learn more and more in depth. So it's like it's all it comes in the full circle at the like you know toward the end of the didactic year. So as of now, like in the last semester, so we have um four more weeks. 13 more exams and I'm I'm used to the six hour studying sessions. I'm used to the going, you know, the grind. Like it's, it's a part of the day to day now, you know, you, you said just a little bit ago and I would have to agree as well. You said about being more relaxed now and you do not that you were uptight or anything before, but you do seem like you've really got into a great group. You seem incredibly happy you seem very relaxed and you seem like you it's hard but it you've you're managing it you're it's under control and you're doing it the thing is 
you know, I'm not facing things that men have not met already, you know, like people have been through this, you know, and I know that I'm capable of, uh, of things. So if I put my, myself to the task, I know I'm capable of doing things. So it's really just putting my best foot forward and not, you know, giving up myself. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> what it comes down to. So now that you're in school and you've been out there a little bit, how does your outlook in terms of healthcare look, or how do you see healthcare as a profession now? So when it comes to that, so my 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 outlook is different because okay, I feel as if I when I was um just like you know being an MA or just like you know scribing, I had limited access to actual patient care, you know. Yep. So. Now that I, you know, I am still a PA student, but we do go on rotations every Friday now. Like we have like a hybrid program where I'm in class from Monday to Thursday from eight to five, and then we have rotations on Fridays from eight to five as well too. So it's a it's a bit different because I get to experience patients firsthand. And the thing is, you don't necessarily always see underserved patients. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not always put in that predicament where you're able to to, to see that because, like I said, insurance purposes, some people just don't end up coming to the doctors. So it's a bunch of things that, you know, that add up to things, that add up to it. But now I just want to be in a field where I can make the biggest impact. You know, and I'm not, it, I don't, I, I can't, I'm one person, I can't help the world. I mean, that for a fact, but if I can make an impact in, in my patient's life as much as possible, but to, if it comes to like a tweaking lifestyle habits or just being there to listen to them, then I feel like I've done my job. And I feel like a lot of people have, you know, they like I said, you said before, yeah, I want to serve underserved communities. Yes, be, after we, we become a, a certified PA, you have the opportunity to do so on your own time and everything. But, you know, you have the resources as well to serve anybody you like to, mm -hmm. you know. But I think it does open the door mm -hmm. to do more extra, you know, curricular activities such as help underserved communities because mm -hmm. you have a community of doctors and physicians behind you that it's like, all right, I know I'll help you as well. You know, so you have, you'll have a, basically a team to help you with it, but you know, it's you're not a one man show. That's what it comes down to. Like it's, it's a team effort nowadays. This is the part where most of the people just kind of want to hear this part, which is what advice or tips do you have for anybody who is going to pursue PA school, get into the PA profession they're starting right now, they haven't done anything or they don't know what to do. What tips or advice would you have for anybody at this stage? Uh, first and foremost, I would say get a job in the field. Like make sure you know this is what you want to do. You know, because once you apply yourself and actually like start going for, go into schools and everything, and once you get in, it's a whole different, a whole different ball game from there. Like a whole different ball game. So I, 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 want people to actually want to be physicians want to help people because a lot of people, some people are in it for the money some people are in it for, you know, the lifestyle. I understand those are, are great perks, mm -hmm. but for advice wise, make sure you want to do this mm -hmm. as well as start to read. Like, I don't, I don't mean read medical stuff, read any books that you, that you enjoy reading, get used to reading, get used to digesting mm -hmm. information, get used to, um, having different, uh, in, like different um, subjects thrown at you at once, <laughs> and then having to test it, you know, get used to, um, you know, sometimes not eating, <laughs> just get used to just just hard work, you know, because that's what it really comes down to. Like this, this whole process is like it's it's all hard work, and it's what you put in. It's really what you put in. Mm -hmm. uh, given that you had to apply. A couple of cycles and what advice would you give to those because often we come up against people who they apply once and understandably people get very dejected and really take it very personally if they don't get in and you know words like let's just get back into it you had to do you know and against pretty much a lot of uh odds that were sort of against you so what would you say to those who maybe they were not successful their first cycle or even second cycle? Be competitive. Actually be competitive. This is a competitive field. So you have to make your application as stacked as possible. If that means shadowing several doctors, if that means 
switching your profession to where you're getting more patient care hours, if that means you have to take more classes, be competitive. And actually, like I said, go for it. If you want this, go for it. Good. That's what we try to tell everybody. <laughs> if you if you're really sure about doing this, you know, just keep at it. It 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 does happen. I mean, sometimes it may not be, it's never going to be as quick as some people want it, but if you stick with it, it it'll happen. So that's the thing. It's not about the quickness of it, you know. Like if you have your mind set on something, go for it with everything you have. Okay. Everything you have. Well, I would say enjoy school, but let's see. You've been on TV. Um, you just did a rotation in London. So, wow, we did not have those when I went to school. So <laughs> I kind of want to go back to school. Like, rotations in London, man. That oh, it, it was a, a great experience. We can see the difference in healthcare and um, how it's uh, given, or how it's like you know. Well, first of all, it was a psych rotation, so it wasn't just healthcare in general. It was just a yeah. uh, type, and um, it is definitely differently than uh we handle it here mm -hmm. so um let me say if you do an opportunity to study abroad or do anything like that private school even in school go for it because you get a different view on healthcare or how is you know practice in different places yep. well again thanks for your time i appreciate you taking time out of your studies and reading and everything else to meet and share your experience with other students uh it was always fun working with you and so i enjoy our little conversation again but Thank you very much for doing this, Brian. I do appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you for everything, man. I would not be here. It's like the show. If it was not for your help. And I appreciate <laughs> it so much, bro. I'm super grateful for you, man. Thank you.